All right, good evening, Facebook, good evening, YouTube, anybody out there following the Grace Point channel, welcome to our Thursday night teachings. We've been going through the Gospel of Matthew, talking about Jesus' interaction with his disciples in chapter 16. Father, bless our hearing and our seeing and our understanding. Open our hearts and minds, Lord, to your word. I pray that in Jesus' name, amen. All right, I'm going to start with verse 8. When Jesus perceived, he said, O you of little faith, chapter 16, Matthew, why reason you among yourself because you brought no bread? Do you not understand? Neither do you remember the five loaves or the 5,000, neither the seven loaves or the 4,000, how many baskets you took up. How is it that you do not understand? I spake to you concerning bread that you should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine, the teaching of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Okay, we'll stop right there. So, as I mentioned two weeks ago, Jesus is emphasizing, hey, watch out what you're hearing, what you're taking in. Don't be deceived by the teaching of religion. Don't be deceived by the teaching of materialism or... Um, you know, a, a non-miraculous God, a, a, a dead God, a, a God that doesn't uh, work, work in our lives like the Sadducees believed. So as you guys are being taught by me, make sure you're learning from me, okay? And so I talked a little bit out of um, 1 Corinthians 2 about, how, about the natural man and the spiritual man. And I've taught on this before, but what I want to emphasize tonight from this, and we'll end this section of teaching on this note, how are we to receive from Jesus? I talked last week about when we come into the scriptures, when I'm reading through the gospels, I am now the follower or the disciple of Jesus, just like you are. So how are we to interact with the word of God? Here I'm seeing this teaching and Jesus is telling them, don't listen to religion. He says, don't you remember when I did that miracle, I was teaching you something. I was teaching you something. You don't have to worry about bread. I am the bread of life. Don't labor for the food that disappears or vanishes, but labor for the food that, that endures to eternal life. That's what he said in John chapter 6. So we're supposed to be interacting with the scriptures and learning from Jesus as he's teaching the disciples. And I'm encouraging you to put yourself in their position and get the lesson that he was teaching them. Are you any less a disciple of Jesus than they were? You say, well, they were apostles. Well, what about the 70? He taught 70 others as well. No, these are disciples. These are followers. And yeah, they're apostles because he's going to send them out. God's going to send you out too. You're going to be an apostle to your family. You're going to be an apostle to your community. You're going to be an apostle to anybody you contact once you grab a hold of the teachings of Jesus and began to live the supernatural life that God wants you to live. Folks, it's not enough to hear the word of God and say, oh, that was good for them or that's a cool miracle or that's not enough. God wants to demonstrate his power and his goodness in your life. That is how he gets glory out of your life. He gets glory out of your life when he interacts in your life, brings his spirit and his will and his kingdom into your life. It's just like the children of Israel. They were tested. They were at war, you know, and, and, and uh, God got glory when the, when the children of Israel went into battle or they had an obstacle in their way, God didn't get glory from the obstacle. He got glory when he sent deliverance and victory and overcoming power to his followers and delivered them. And they, they had all type of persecution, all type of suffering, all type of things happened to them. But God was glorified when they trusted him. Come on, someone say amen. He was glorified when they trusted him 
And because they trusted him and obeyed him and interacted with him, he was able to come on the scene and bring them deliverance. That's the whole testimony of the Old Testament, whether it happened immediately, like uh, the parting of the Red Sea, although that wasn't immediate, was it? That took a long time before they got there, but they needed that miracle and God parted the Red Sea in an instant. Or whether it's over, uh, whether it's over time, like Joseph, you know, who was tested and tried, and over time, the dream and the vision that God had for his life manifested, and he was raised up to be number two in power in Egypt. God interacts with his people, and God wants to interact with you. So I'm encouraging you to come into the word of God to learn what Jesus is teaching his followers so you can follow him too. Now, flip over to Ephesians chapter 1. Right, and I, I'm, sure. I'm going to turn off this phone because it <laughs> keeps talking to me. Ephesians chapter 1. And I pray this scripture all the time before I teach. But I encourage you, when you go into the word, pray this prayer and then believe God that he is going to illuminate you. Listen to what he says in chapter 1, verse 15. Paul was praying. He said, when I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and I heard of the love you have for all the saints. Man, I don't stop mentioning you in my prayers that the God of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. That the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened, that you would know what is the hope of his calling what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? Get this. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe? The same power that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead. He's praying that they understand the inheritance that Jesus has in them, what they have in Jesus and what Jesus has in them. And he's praying that they would understand the power that's available to them that believe. So as we're going through and seeing these miracles and seeing the interaction that God, that Jesus has with the, his disciples, we need to understand that he's teaching us too. It's got to be personal in your own life. We're going to get, we're coming right to that spot next week where Jesus is going to ask them the all important question, who do you say that I am? We'll pick up there next week.